Um, I, I, I was very fortunate uh, when I was in India for two years and I met a, a, a handful of remarkable beings, one of whom was uh, Nimkoli Baba, who was known as Maharaji Ramdas and made him famous as his guru, but he was, he was what uh, Tibetans might call a Mahasiddha. In fact, the Karmapa, 16th Karmapa, did call him a Mahasiddha, which means someone who's really awake and enlightened. And he, I experienced him in the same way as many others did. And I also have found many uh, uh, Tibetan teachers of the sort who are, who are called by a, a younger lama, the antique lamas, the ones who went through proper training in Tibet in the old days, have the same uh, potency, I would say. But I'd be interested to hear your view. Yes, well, it's, what is interesting is that um, Dan, uh, actually it was 1984 then, 84. Oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, when I introduced Dan to the Dalai Lama, and uh, Dan was absolutely essential to that conference on inner science. It was at Amherst College. I was teaching there in those days. And Dan has been the one who has most best introduced the Dalai Lama all for now, since then, over 30 years, to all different scientists. And he published Destructive Emotions. I think you did a bunch of different things, right? And yeah. You and I did a thing called Mind Science. That's right. It was published at MIT, actually. As exactly. Well. And so um, Dan has been absolutely close friend of His Holiness. He loves Dan. And in a way, he's been De the His Holiness's doorway to speak to the modern scientists, which is a, was a tremendous thing that His Holiness Th liked. That started in 84 when you introduced us because he said right away, uh, you know, I really want to meet scientists. Exactly. exactly. So then so I, you're the one who brought everything. Well, I was one of them. It was the Mind and Life group, Francisco yes, Varela, Adam Engel, and so on. Exactly. They convened a series of dialogues with His Holiness over the years, including one dialogue was just before he won, the day before he won the Nobel Prize. Yes, yeah, the one in California, Beach. Ron yeah. Yes, I remember Yes, that. exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. and of course, but uh, Bob is actually underplaying his role. Because I think of all Westerners, you have the longest relationship yeah, 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 and the closest. Bit. Who are still alive. You know, I met him in 1964, really, first time, for the first time in India. And uh, I, was, uh, he, I was his first American monk, which uh, I don't really like to talk about because I'm the, also his first American ex-monk. <laughs> <That's laughs> because right. I, didn't, I didn't last that long. Um, our, my senior original teacher, an elderly Mongolian gentleman, brought me to the Dalai Lama and he told His Holiness, who at that time was only 28, I was 22, and uh, he told him, he said, uh, uh, he is a very nice American boy, he's a little crazy, very smart, but he speaks Tibetan already, and he's insisting on being a monk, but he, please don't make him a monk, Your Holiness, because he won't be staying as a monk, he like that. But then he said, well, I'm just an old Mongolian, you decide. And then His Holiness made me wait as a novice for, quite, for like eight months or something. But we became such good friends that he, did, and I was very sincere, and we were both too young. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since then, you know, I've been, uh, m you know, more and more close to him. And at that time, we were kind of like fellow students together because he would remand me to his teachers about sort of Dharma questions, you know, and then we would talk about everything under the sun. I would think I was the second Westerner fluent in Tibetan who he could, you know, download my semblance of a Harvard education, a Philip Dexter education, whatever education I had about, I think I was not helpful to him and I couldn't tell him how to make a nuclear weapon. And <laughs> I didn't know that much about quantum the physics at science the time. Stuff. I've learned a bit more since then, uh, thanks to his influence. But mm -hmm. But we talked about the humanities and psychology and Freud and the unconscious. I had to make up a lot of Tibetan words. It was a lot of fun. So we became great buddies, kind of. Then, in the, starting in the 70s, he sort of emerged as a great teacher himself of philosophy, Tibetan philosophy, which I studied with, studied with him. And he helped me a lot in my, around the time I was doing my dissertation on a very important Indian and Tibetan philosophical work. And then in the early, in the late 70s, early 80s, he emerged as a great sort of uh, tantric master, like meditation master. And um, then he really, since then he's really been kind of my guru as well as my friend. But one of the things that's great about his holiness, as Dan will say, is that he's very resilient in his personality. And he can be very like a sort of uh, high and lofty, like a teacher in a certain setting. And then he's just totally ordinary and relaxed and very, 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 very That's nice. True. Actually, my wife 
gave the best analysis once we were asked by an Indian gentleman, had we ever seen the Dalai Lama perform a miracle? And I didn't know quite what to say. You know, there, there have been some funny happenings around the Dalai Lama. There are sometimes. But you're not supposed to really talk about them. And I was kind of like, well, I mean, why? She immediately says, oh, yes, all the time. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> jumping like this. And then, uh, then he says, well, what were they? And he's leaning forward. And uh, she says, well, I, we've, we've arranged different visits of his over the years and been with him a lot of different times. And I've seen him in very stressed and busy situations, a lot of people wanting a piece of him. And I've never seen him with anybody not giving them his full attention and being concerned with what they want and need rather than like his agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's a miracle. <laughs> and <laughs> that's I thought true. it was really well done. That's really but true. the Indian guy was so disappointed. Like, oh. <laughs> but he does, no admit, he does 